Hi everyone, I'm back this week and I want to talk about the artist Alma Woodsy Thomas and her use of color and how her paintings also relate to mosaics. So I brought a slideshow to show you what I mean. So this is a piece Alma Woodsy Thomas did in 1966 and it's a painting. She's made a painting just by painting these short little brush strokes in the primary and secondary colors. So the colors we've been talking about this month. And this one is called Air View of a Spring Nursery. And she was often inspired by nature. She said she could hear the wind playing music in the trees. Emma Woodsy Thomas was an African-American woman. She was from Georgia and she moved to Washington DC when she was a young child because there was more opportunity there for African-Americans and to escape racism in the South. And she grew up to be an art teacher. She taught for 35 years, that's a long time, in the Washington DC public schools, in the same school. And after she retired, she started really painting a lot. So these paintings are from after she stopped teaching. And this one is called Blast Off. She was also really interested in space and rockets going to the moon and the depth, the bigness of space. So you can see all of these are done in her same way of these little rectangular sort of brush strokes with bright, bright, pink colors. This one is Starry Nights and the Astronauts. Some people say that the red and yellow and orange up there looks a little bit like the fire at the bottom of a rocket. I like that idea. And I like how most of the painting is just different blues because it makes you really look at it. She also had a sense of humor. She did a whole series of paintings from Snoopy's point of view. So this is Snoopy sees Earth wrapped in sunset. And this one is called Apollo 12 Splash Down. And this is about the rocket that went to the moon with astronauts and then when it came back. I really like how she's kind of made a rainbow of colors in here. But you can feel sort of the rocket coming back and landing in the ocean. And she was the first African-American woman to get a solo exhibit at the Whitney in New York. It's a big art museum in New York. So this was a big deal for African-American woman artists and African-American artists across the board. Her paintings were often compared to mosaics. And this is an example of a mosaic by Antoni Gaudi, who was a Spanish artist, Catalan artist. And he died almost a hundred years ago. But here you can see he's made pictures and designs in bright, bright colors out of little pieces of glass and tile. And this is in the Park Ghoul in Barcelona, Spain. And here's another mosaic he did here. Can you see the similarity between Alma Woodsy Thomas's work? And these, these were done much earlier. These were done around when she was about 10 years old. So I, I don't think she went to Spain and saw them, but she could have seen pictures later in life when she went to college. This is a lizard in Park Ghoul by Gaudi that's made out of mosaic. And here's an artist who's working now, Jim Batcher. He's in Chicago and he does mosaics in potholes in the street. This one he did during the pandemic and it's called Holy Trinity. It's like three very important things. So two of them are toilet paper and hand sanitizer, Purell. And he just does these and leaves them in the potholes in the streets. And sometimes they stay, but sometimes they disappear. Where do you think they go? maybe they repave the street or maybe somebody digs it up and takes it i don't know but this one is a crunch bar it's called pretty trashed nationally crunch bar so he's doing mosaics of garbage he's painting pictures of garbage with pieces of glass 
And the other one's a creamsicle from a series called Treats in the Streets. He did a whole bunch of ice creams and ice cream sandwiches and everything in the streets of Chicago. So we looked at Elmo Woodsy Thomas and also some mosaic artists from a long time ago and from now and talked about how they're similar. They both worked with blocks of color, bright, bright color. So what we're going to do is make our own mosaics out of recycled materials. So what I did was I collected some thin cardboards from my recycling, cereal boxes, cream cheese, things in colors that I liked. And I'm going to cut them into little squares to make a mosaic. Now you can make anything you want. It can be a picture of something like the creamsicle or something like that, or it can be an abstract pattern. It can be inspired by something you think about or just having fun. I decided to just do an abstract pattern. That means it's not a picture of something real. It's not a picture of this glue bottle. It's just a pattern. But I'm thinking about what colors I want next to each other and where I want these lines to go. Now, if you don't have any cardboard, that's fine. You can take colored paper, you can take a piece of white paper and color it, and then just cut up your little squares and make your mosaic with that. But if you have the cardboard, it's kind of fun because it's a little thicker and it feels like it, more like a tile. So that's what I want you to do. You need a piece of paper to glue on, scissors, glue, and something to make your tiles out of, like some cereal boxes or something. Now I just used the plain colored pieces, but you can use pieces with patterns on them if you want to. It's up to you. So here's how mine ended up. Remember, you can use any parts of the boxes. You can use the parts with words or pictures or not. I just used the plain colors, but it's entirely up to you. I can't wait to see what you come up with.